let me show you what I think is the perfect scrap wood project. As a furniture maker, I produce a lot of scraps. That's just the nature of the business. Oftentimes those scraps come from slabs that I've processed into square or rectangular furniture, leaving me with a live edge off cut. Some people like to burn those. I like to collect them and use them as small wall shelves around the shop, around the house. They hold interesting objects in an interesting way. And today I wanna make one for my office. So as you can see, I've got a selection here of live edge offcuts that could all work really well as wall shelves. I've got some skinny and some long. I've got some short and some wide. Now this offcut comes from a piece I made for one of my closest friends. I'll link that video up there so you can take a look at it if you like. It's one of my favorite pieces that I've made and I have a deep affection for that object for obvious reasons. So I think I wanna use this piece in my office as a little wrap around corner shelf situation. Now, as you can tell, I've already done the epoxy pour on this piece. I did that eons ago when I was actually making the cabinet just because I knew I was going to turn this into a wall shelf eventually, and this piece was severely checked. This is air dried walnut from my friend's home. That was part of the allure of the piece was taking this tree from their backyard and turning it into a piece of furniture. So consequently, it had some voids and checks and things that backyard trees tend to have. But it should be stabilized now, so we're gonna go ahead and mill this piece down and see what it looks like. So as you can see, I've got my pieces milled. I've got my miter cut. This piece had to be removed because this section of the live edge was wider than this section. So I wanted to make sure that my front and back lined up. That's not an issue. I lost maybe a quarter of an inch. That's not gonna make or break a shell for me. And it still tapers out to this end. As long as this part is still at the same width after the miter, we're gonna have a good lineup. Now the way that I'm going to install these shelves is two separate shelves that meet at a miter in the middle. So I'm gonna drop a domino in here. You can use a biscuit that would work just as well. Frankly, I would use a biscuit if I had a biscuiter, but I don't currently have one at this shop. So I'm just gonna slip a domino in there real quick. So now at this point, we need to actually install how we're gonna hang this, and I'm going to do this using keyholes. Now, before you go giving me any gruff on that, let me tell you why I like keyholes. Now here's the thing about keyholes. They're fast, they're accurate, and they're way stronger than most people give them credit for. I'm not suggesting this is a replacement for steel brackets. For anything wider than say eight inches or anything made out of MDF or plywood, I would not go with a keyhole. Number one, there's a lot of leverage there. And number two, if you're making something out of MDF or plywood, it doesn't have the structural integrity that a live edge piece of wood does, that a real piece of wood does. And that makes a big difference when you're talking about something like the keyhole. For something small, this may be four to six inches wide and actual wood, I think the keyhole is way stronger than we give it credit for. Now I wanna show you a bar that I made a few months ago. That's just two pieces of floating live edge wood held to the wall with keyholes. On that bottom bracket, there are eight keyholes, four on the top and four on the bottom. I've never had even the slightest issue with that bar being loose, wobbly at all. Also, I'm just remembering these bookshelves that I made I don't know, seven, eight years ago, have been hanging in multiple different homes. Keyholes, one keyhole in that wall, one keyhole in that wall, slides right down, have never had an issue with weight, pulling off the wall, none of that. And if you're saying to yourself, sure, 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 there's not a lot of weight on those. Same exact shelves, different color. Fully loaded up with books, have been for almost a decade, no problems whatsoever. The keyhole is stronger than you think.
So this thing is in excellent shape. The last step is just to do some sanding on the live edge and then of course surface prep the faces before I can throw some finish on here. Now the finish I'm using for this is just my normal finish. It's a mixture of turpentine, oil, and urethane. If you wanna learn how to make and apply that finish, I'll throw a link up there for you. Now if I'm honest, if I had spray shellac, I would have used that because I could handle these and hang them within an hour. But because of the finish I use, I'm gonna give these guys a couple hours to dry before I install them. All right, it's been a couple of hours. I came home, ate lunch. The sheen on the finish is looking real nice. I put a light coat of wax on top and we're just gonna install these now. I'm going to install the shelves back here so that while I'm working at my desk, I have somewhere to like set a cup of coffee, put the external components that are back here on something rather than sitting on the desk itself, because it's not a huge desk. Now, I don't want wainscoting in here any more than any other millennial wants it in their house. However, this was here when I bought the place. I am gonna renovate this room at some point, but right now it's perfectly functional as a guest bedroom slash office. So I'm just gonna tap directly into the wainscoting with the screws. That's gonna be thick enough to really hold it in place for as small as these shelves are and then when I tear it down eventually, it's not gonna be an issue. If I didn't have the wainscoting here, I would use a proper drywall anchor. I generally use a 50 or a 75 pound anchor, tap them, and those fit directly into those keyholes, no problem. Now check this out, I think you guys are gonna like this. My favorite method for installing keyholes is to take a piece of wood, could even actually be on a level where you put a piece of tape down, and I'm just gonna mark my distance to my keyholes. In this case, they're 16 inches. I'm gonna put my first one, right on the line there. I'm gonna drop a speed level on there. I'm gonna aim for level. And now I know exactly where to put my screws and I'm not gonna have any issues when I'm actually installing this. All right, I'm gonna line it up, slide it over. That thing ain't going nowhere. New day, new me. Well, new day, same me, I suppose. I decided to push the end of the video to the next day because I was running out of sunlight and nobody wants to see ugly yellow light from these boob lights that I have up on the ceiling. I mean, come on. These fixtures look like they're straight out of 1997. Anyway, this is installed, it all looks good. Yes, I have a mirror here, and this is actually something I wanna point out. I don't have a mirror here because I'm a narcissist, which I am. I have a mirror here because it's an optical illusion and makes a corner space feel a lot bigger. This just happens to be the mirror that I had in this room, so it's the one that I put here. But now when I sit at my desk, it feels like I have the entire length of that room on the other side of my desk. So optical illusion. The shelf, however, is no optical illusion. It looks great, let me show you. So, it's just some knickknacks on here, but what I really wanted was a place to put my external hard drive and some of the things that I need for recording and editing back here so that they're out of the way of the desk so I can push my monitor back and give myself a much larger working space. So just having some things over here like pens and pencils, I'll put my sketchbook there that's at the shop right now. That's going to make a big difference just in kind of the cleanliness of my desk, which is kind of what I wanted in the first place. So in any case, friends, that's that. That's this week's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was interesting. I hope it was educational. Uh, and I hope this is a technique that you can employ in your own homes because they just add a lot of character to the space, man. This is, they're, they're all over my house. I've got these tiny little shelves holding up sculptures, holding up things that friends have made. They're just a brilliant little way to use scraps and way better than burning them, in my opinion. So that's that, friends. Until next week, cheers.